told him up to I seen him. <laughs> 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 you for real? Like, no, like, I will, but like, yeah. How about that? That's great. That's great. Hold them high. <laughs> All right, uh, good evening. My name is Dylan. Um, before I get to my main proposition, I'd like to start off with a story. Um, it's 1990. A student named Jack is 18 years old. From the day he was born, his parents have told him to go to college, get an education, right? Um, getting an education makes him more successful in life, and thus, you know, He'll be more successful. Um, so, Jack graduates school, right? Uh, graduates school with an $18,000 student loan, and he pays that off in six years. Um, fast forward 20 years, Jack has a daughter. Uh, Jack has a daughter named Jane. Um, ever since she was young, same thing. Her parents told her to go to school, get a degree. He'll be more successful in life. Okay, um, this brings up my main proposition, America's view on higher education will ultimately send the economy in a recession. Um, my three points will be student loans are at an all-time high. Education or student loans are at an all-time high. Um, the second point, if your current degree does not get you a job, surely getting another degree will get you a job. And thirdly, this has to do with the enabling fact that people or the government has enabled itself to give people loans, student loans, with pretty much no uh, verification that they're going to get the money back. So, um, back to the story. Jane, she has graduated from Cal Poly with $48,000 worth of student loan debts, um, which brings me to that first point. 2014 student loan, all-time high. Government analysis, Mark Konstritz, um, nicknamed this generation of BA recipients as the most indebted ever. Um, with BA loans averaging from 40K plus and doubling 20, or doubling 20, doubling the loans that were 20 years ago. Um, back to my story. Uh, Jane, six months after she gets her BA, not able to get any job. Um, you know, looking for Frank. Yeah, anyways, she's looking for a job. She can't get one. And what does she do? Go back. Goes back to school. Brings up my point number two. Um, America's view: If you can't get a job with your current degree, you go back to school. Get a master's degree, right? Um, report what do post report from what do postgrads do found a disturbing seventeen percent of postgraduates unemployed and or are at a job that isn't with their current degree. Um, the Association of Graduate Recruiters, which recruits uh, postgrads to get them located into a job, states that twenty seven percent actually don't need the masters with the job that they hold. Either they go into some other career field or it was just a waste of money. Um, with that being said, they also noted that every student that gets their masters was average, averaging another $50,000 worth of debt. So back to the story, you have Jane. She not only did four years, but you know, came back for her masters. Now she's around 90 k in debt and not able to pay that off. Um, which brings me to our third point. Um, um, okay, which brings me to my third point, and hopefully brings everything together. Um, America's need for a higher education has forced, um, forced people, or not really forced, but has given the opportunity for people to make money off of these people. So you have the government, um, as Kevin Bellini stated, a former Freddie Mac chief economist, um, found a striking resemblance in the comparing of the student loan policies from the Obama um, from the Obama administration to the housing loan policies of the Clinton and Bush administration. Um, the reason I bring this up is to kind of foretell what might come to happen is there might be another bubble burst, maybe not in the housing market, but in the student loan market. You have all these kids 
with over $90,000 of debt that aren't able to pay their money back. So what's going to happen to the economy? Um, then you have Sally Mae, who 90%, anyone who applies to Sally Mae gets a student loan. So as a recap, you have on the right field, you know, the American dream, getting an education. If that doesn't work, get even more education. And if that doesn't work, well, what do you do? Um, then you have on the left field, which you have your enablers, which are saying, hey, yeah, we'll give you as much money as you want as long as we get paid. Because more than likely, they're going to get their money at the end, just like the government bailed out the banks at the end. Um, so in conclusion, I hope these points circle out that the American dream for higher education will lead to the country, will lead the country into a recession. All right, Dylan, uh, the serial example that you're using in the presentation is fine, but I do think that you need to, every time it comes up, it ought to be followed up by some statistical information or a piece of testimony that then tells us why that part of the story is representative, typical, and problematic. So, for instance, when you mention, uh, you know, what's her name? Jane. Jane, yes. <laughs> you know, going back to school for an additional degree, well, how many students run into that problem. You've got a statistic about the number of students who are either unemployed or employed in a, a field outside of what their major is, and what percentage of those folks go back to get an extra degree, you know, and then end up carrying extra debt. All I've got, uh, debt, excuse me. All I've got is this kind of hypothetical example on that without the follow-up. And that happens in a lot of places. So I think you explain the concept pretty well. What you're not doing is demonstrating that it is in fact having this particular effect. There's no data that tells us what the total debt is based on uh, student loans and what percentage of the economy that is, which is at the end of the argument, your goal is ultimately to prove that this is going to, I mean, you say it, it's, it's similar to the collapse that we had with the housing market. So how big is it? You've got this bubble coming. How likely is it that people won't be able to pay it back? I don't know, because all I've got are these hypotheticals about uh, a student getting through Cal Poly with $48,000 in student debt. Now, I don't know how much debt you guys are taking on. I don't know what you're spending your money on. So it's a little bit hard for me to figure those kinds of things. I don't want to disparage anybody and say that that's not, I don't know that that's not accurate, but I'm sitting here, my daughter, graduated from Cal Poly in 2011 with no debt whatsoever, you know? And I'm wondering why somebody else has got $48,000 in debt and somebody else can do this without any debt. And I, believe me, I was not writing a $48,000 check to anybody, you know? I did write a bunch of checks, but not anything close to that amount of money. So it's just, your hypothetical might be representative of a big population, but you need to show us and kind of connect that data. And I think sometimes the secondary claims, like I said, instead of being claims, they're explanations of what your process is, and you need to have more declarative statements on those particular points. I thought you delivered it pretty well and explained the ideas and concepts. Like I said, sometimes it just feels like there's, there's a connecting point that's missing in the argument. All right. We're going to rush through because